story once again this morning. The Caldor fires were keeping you up to date on what's happening up in El Dorado County. And wow, the pictures once again say it all. Frightening orange glow. So many firefighters trying to save homes in South Lake Tahoe before uh, the flames get to them. The situation is dire. You can see that, that uh, it has been moving, the fire, to the northeast, to the Nevada border. Yeah. It's threatening now. Heavenly Ski Resort. Yeah, that's the latest. And that is where Crown Force Sarah Stinson is standing by this morning with the very latest for us. Sarah, good morning. Yeah, good morning. I'm reporting here from the Heavenly California Lodge where uh, some of the 4,200 crews, just a couple of them are here. There's also a staging area where they have equipment. This is where they are geared up and ready if the winds led flames this way. Let me tell you, if the flames came over and was on Heavenly, we'd have a lot of issues, not just for Heavenly, but there are a lot of homes that surround the ski resort and nearby is, P is Pioneer Trail, another area where homes have been protected by fire crews and they're ready to protect them at all costs. The state line casinos are only two miles away from here. So if flames did come down this way, it would be all hands on deck. But fire crews have been working on the ridge and up to the dense terrain to hold in place fire lines to prevent the fire from traveling down here. There's only so much you can do, though, when you're dealing with Mother Nature, who's been serving up erratic winds, hot temperatures and low humidity. Firefighters have saved a ton of neighborhoods from the flames. But despite nonstop efforts, the Caldor fire has sadly destroyed 595 homes and 12 businesses. Still this morning, 32,000 structures are being threatened. People who have homes in the Lake Tahoe fire zones have been on pins and needles, grasping for any information. I talked with a San Francisco man. His family has a cabin up here since the 90s. He's been anxiously waiting or watching rather the fire line get closer and closer to his home. We would always, you know, spend time with each other and just, you know, during the summertime, we'd go to the, you know, Zephyr Cove and during the winter, of course, you know, go skiing, go sledding. And there was just a lot of memories and, you know, we've put, we've, now we have like tons of pictures all over the walls of all these memories. And so to, to hear about it going down in flames just like that is, it was a lot. And you know, more than just our house, but also our neighbors, you know, who we've known for years as well. Now, it's hard for the Magpeo family because when they heard about the Caldor fire near their home, it was too late to come up here because of the mandatory evacuations. So they couldn't come up from the Bay Area and grab anything. So they're kind of grasping with the reality that they could lose everything inside in the home with all those memories inside it. But in the meantime, they've been focusing on helping people who have been displaced because a lot of people who live up here, they live up here full time. So Christian, he talked to me. He said, I'm just trying to figure out how I can help. Now, coming up in the next hour we'll hear from another man he just bought a house up here during the pandemic and now his home's close to the fire line we're talking to a lot of people who are dealing with this anxiousness of the fate of their homes so that's coming up in the next hour for now winds are not as bad as they are later in the afternoon we know the fire was about four miles from here last night we're hoping that it doesn't get worse this afternoon and into the day. For now, reporting live at Heavenly, Sarah Stinson, back to you. Thank you, Sarah.